So our second talk is by Peter O'Brien, and he's got a lot of things going. Um, he's the head of Photonic Packaging and Integration at Tyndall. Um, he's the director of PixApp, which is a new European photonic packaging pilot line, funded at about 15 and a half million euro. Uh, and he previously founded and sold a photonic startup uh, and he's a research scientist at JPC and at JPL. JPL? Yeah. That's your fault. JPL. Yeah. <laughs> and Caltech. And the title of the talk is going to be Prototyping Pick Packaging Solutions. Are we ready? Yeah, I'm okay. indeed. Thanks, Thanks Rich. <clears throat> okay, so um, I was asked to talk about uh, prototyping uh, pick packaging uh, solutions for, for a variety of applications. And I suppose one of the big uh, uh, you know, important kind of aspects of the, the PIC technologies is that we have to be able to show um, what industry can use these for. So we do need early wins. We need to be able to show, especially from our, you know, our funding agencies um, like the European Commission who've invested huge uh, amounts of uh, financial resources into PIC technologies across the different platforms from silicon to indium phosphide, silicon nitride, that there's a return as well on this. And um, I suppose to put things into perspective, um, there's a very strong emphasis in Europe on SMEs, so supporting small to medium enterprises. And uh, there's been a lot of developments in that space, so European companies, um, startups, etc., and, and new entrants into PIC technologies can relatively quickly uh, find new applications. And they're not always in the communication space, they're in medical. And I'll give one or two examples of that where we're actually starting to kind of develop prototypes with these companies and then they can start to exploit the, the commercial opportunities as well. So um, there, there's quite a few uh, support measures around that. So um, um, just to talk about our own group. Uh, so our own group is uh, support, uh, really is, uh, works across a number of interfaces. So um, we, we cut across a number of areas, so uh, research and prototyping. Uh, and that's really, as I said, uh, the, the drive there is to work with industry to, to help develop uh, their, their immediate needs. Um, and we get some great uh, progress with that. Um, but then one of the immediate requests from industry is that we start to um, uh, look at manufacturing. And that's a, that's a need that has been identified by the European Commission. So recently uh, they uh, put a number of calls out for pilot lines, really to scale up beyond the prototyping. And that includes packaging, but also chip founders as well. So next year there's going to be two new pilot lines in indium phosphide and silicon. There's already one previously funded for silicon nitride. So these are very important to, to scale up. But actually what we're finding is that as soon as we start to tell people there's a pilot line, the next thing they say is, well that's great, but we, we want to see how we're going to manufacture. So we don't want to invest in a pilot line, in a pilot line process, unless we see a viable way to transfer it into manufacturing. And that's, that's kind of like, essentially what we've done is put, push the cliff out further. So that's, that's something we really need to start to address to develop the full ecosystem, not just from packaging. I think it does exist to, to a larger degree in chip scale, the, the, the founders, as you see from the previous talk. And again, there's, there's a lot of very advanced, for example, MPW services in, in Europe. Um, but packaging is much more pressing. So that's something that we're learning now that we really need to address that. But uh, as I say, uh, looking then at uh, addressing the, uh, the, the pilot scale and volume packaging. So, um, as I said, our group is kind of like to be able to develop prototypes. We're, we're kind of vertically integrated. Um, and there's benefits and there's, there's pros and cons to that. Um, you spread yourself across a number of dis different disciplines, but really to develop these prototyping solutions, you have to offer the full range of, kind of uh, packaging technologies. And I think a nice example of that is work that we've recently done with uh, IMEC and Medtronic. Um, Medtronic Research Labs based in the Netherlands um, on uh, cardiovascular sensor using a silicon photonic uh, platform. And this is uh, looking at heart disease. So essentially it's measuring the pulse wave velocity on the carotid artery. And that's an indication of uh, artery hardening. So there's already a te technique that has been developed by Medtronic, but they wanted to miniaturize that and make a portable system. So again, in that partnership with IMEC, for example, they developed the PICS, quite advanced PICS. There's six channel uh, interrogation system on that device, but we have basically had to, to look at the full packaging solution and develop a prototype. And just you see here very quickly in this animation, you know there's quite quite a lot in that. You know, you have your, your PIC device, 
um, in, in here, you have a laser integrated. It's kind of like similar to work we've been doing separately on transceivers, using similar kind of integration techniques. Um, just look at the heart of the device, you see the actual silicon pick. We integrate a laser, it's hybrid integration with micro optics, and then obviously the temperature control, passive temperature control, and uh, all the ancillary components that go to build a full prototype. And if you look at that then, you, you go from kind of chip scale packaging where we integrate a laser. This is again, much like what Lux Terra have been doing with their transceiver. We take a similar approach, it's on a ceramic platform, um, micro isolator, uh, micro optics for uh, beam focusing back into a grating coupler. And then that's, that's integrated onto a subsystem. So you have your, again, your micro optics, which are, which are silicon pick, and a macro optical system, and then a, then a full prototype. And that's actually proving quite successful. Medtronic are very interested in that. And now we're looking at going to pilot production. And that's a nice example of how um, you can start to package and, and develop a full system solution. Just looking at that in a little bit more detail, what we've learned is from a packaging perspective, it's very important that we understand some of the kind of tolerances that are are, that are required and historically we, we've depended on the foundries to, to look at the grading couplers for example but we need to understand in a more detail so again we brought into our team now uh, people working on for example numerical this is actually the micro optical bench and for example here you see the, the thickness of the ceramic it's very important and the location of the grading couplers and um, where, where you actually locate the laser it's, it's really very strongly dependent on that so not just understanding from a from a, uh, an assembly and packaging point of view, but the fundamentals. And in this particular case here, you see um, where, where you actually focus the beam onto the grading coupler really is a strong dependence on the coupling efficiency. So essentially what you're doing here is the laser, sorry, the, the light is coming from the laser, deflected down into the grading coupler. And you can really have a, a very profound effect on the coupling efficiency. But from a packaging perspective, it's important that we understand the fundamentals. Hence we brought that expertise into our group. We have approximately 25 people in our team, and I would say half the team are working on design and modeling, not just the actual packaging. So, um, as in the previous talk, grading couplers are very important. Uh, a lot of nice features around that, especially large-scale manufacturing. Um, we've developed quite a few uh, prototypes around that type of platform. Um, it's also worth mentioning that you can do passive uh, alignment. So, this is actually just a, an image from our flip chip system where we actually simultaneously image the fiber core. So you can see the fiber core here in the V-groove, and it's actually aligned passively over the, um, the grading coupler and they're brought into contact. And we can achieve between 80 and 90% equivalent coupling power uh, as active alignment. So this is something that we're starting to look at now from a manufacturing point of view. I mentioned later on, uh, we're starting to work with packaging com or equipment companies. I think that's a very important part of the equation. And again, that's something that definitely can be uh, uh, automated and uh, developed for, from a passive uh, packaging technique. Um, also then, uh, another uh, process, we, we've uh, started to work with Ming Wu in Berkeley, um, and that's a quite a large optical switch, a MEMS optical switch, currently working on 136 channel uh, uh, fiber um, array to package into that uh, MEMS switch. And Really, one of the big challenges here is with these uh, fibers, uh, they're obviously quite large, and if you have a large number of channels, your pick can be, can be kind of a lot of real estate just from a fiber packaging point of view, the edge of the pick. So here, we've actually, what we've done is, um, we use an ion diffusion process, we partner with a, with a, with a company in France, um, and they, we've worked with them uh, to reduce the pitch, so the pitch is brought down from 127 to 63.5 micron, um, and uh, again, you can see the fiber array here, and this is the, uh, the, the ion diffused uh, waveguide. And it's a planar process. So you can see the large number of fiber uh, connectors in that. The losses currently, they're reasonable. Um, they're on the order of around uh, a dB. That's actually for the, uh, the actual the, the loss associated with that um, interposer. So um, again, it's kind of a trade-off, something we're working on as you go to very large channel numbers. You don't want your pick just size determined by the fiber array. So that's an attempt to actually minimize that. Um, edge coupling, um, spoke about this before. Some people are probably aware of the new high NA fibers. They can be very easily spliced. And uh, another technique, again, using that um, ion diffusion process, you can reduce the, uh, the mold size and simultaneously reduce the pitch. So there's a number of foundries now making these uh, edge-coupled silicon photonic waveguides with mode adapters, typically around 3 micron. Um, I believe AIM have a larger mode size, and I'll just talk about that in a second. But uh, 
for example, with iMac, it's a true micro and mode size uh, uh, input, so you can't use standard SMF28 fiber, so hence you need to use these approaches. And the, nice, the nicer uh, feature of this ion diffusion process, there's some losses associated with it, it can be improved, you can reduce the pitch. So there's nice features again. I mentioned earlier about the, the large number of channels on the uh, Berkeley pick. So, um, for example, in this uh, uh, image here, you see edge coupling, where uh, rather than kind of cutting and polishing the device, this is an edge coupled silicon pick, um, it's a deep etch. And really, essentially what you're doing here is you're etching and then you're just dicing the devices out. So it's a wafer scale deep etch process, um, and you get relatively smooth facets. Um, to facilitate that, we've had to develop these, what we call lidless fibers. And it's quite a challenge, so, um, you know, uh, to develop these fiber arrays, you know, working with, for example, we, we can do that, but we typically then go to suppliers, and that can be a real problem. Um, they don't like taking the risk, and um, there's a lot of you know, cost associated with the NRE, but as you can see, butting the fiber array, you know, with that ledge here, um, you need to ensure that there's, a, there's no lid covering that, and that can cause real problems, because the fibers do not sit very neatly into the V-group, they can move around. So there's issues around that. Um, what I'll just show here is, this is actually a device we packaged just recently for Karen Bergman's group in Colombia. Um, these are devices from AIM. Quite impressed by the, the quality of the facets, you can see the deep etch here. So this is the actual, uh, can't see, we tried to image the waveguide, we couldn't see it in the SEM. Um, and, uh, but you can see the actual facet, and then this is the dicing region here. And the facets are relatively smooth. Um, we got coupling losses of around 4 dB with this, and we believe it's down to the mismatch between the, the fiber and the, uh, the, the mold size. We need to get more information about that, but we just use standard SMF28. That's what we were advised to use, but I think that needs to be optimized. But the point here is that the edge coupling, um, passive alignment, there's some very impressive new equipment. For example, Physic Instrument have a very nice tool now where you can actually very rapidly do active alignment, so it's quite fast. Um, so those, uh, again, the equipment is really, really important here to facilitate that type of packaging. As you can see here, this is actually where we're bringing the, lid, the fiber in. So this is the actual fiber. This is the pick, it's upside down. And you can actually see the fiber core. This is actually on a nano glue uh, fiber packaging system that we have in our lab. And you can see it's brought into contact. So you can see the fiber block uh, brought into contact with the pick here. And it's glued, epoxy glued into position. Um, obviously moving to wafer scale, so there's some, some very nice techniques that have been uh, currently under development. We're working on some of those ourselves. So moving from kind of a, a step by step, or package by package process, process to more wafer scale, very important. Um, number of approaches there include micro optical integration, I'll talk about that, but also evanescent coupling, that's a technology we're working on ourselves. There's a number of groups, I think the most uh, progressive work that's been done is by IBM and Zurich, and uh, I believe they've stopped that, um, surprisingly enough, but um, that's a very interesting work. Bert Offering and his team have developed a very interesting technology around that, but, that needs to continue. Um, very briefly uh, on micro-optics, integration of wafer scale, very important for things like uh, LiDAR and medical. Actually, the, uh, for example, that, that medical device sensor we, I spoke about earlier on uses micro-optical integration. So very important for when you're doing sensing off, off the pick and coming back on to do the interrogation of, of, of the uh, uh, return signal. Um, I, I should point out that I uh, recently spoke to a, uh, a, an injection molding company working on plastic um, micro-optics that can actually do molding on silicon, 300 millimeter silicon wafers. So I do see uh, great potential besides, this is glass micro-optics I'll talk about in a second, but for integration of very low cost polymer based micro-optics it can be done on wafer scale. But um, the motivation behind this work here was actually uh, work we did previously with uh, US Connects on a uh, prism light turn, you might be familiar with, where we had to modify it, and uh, essentially what we have is a micro lens array on Vixels, collimated through a, uh, a hermetically sealed package, you can see the little window here, and the pluggable connector. So using that type of approach, we integrated micro optics onto silicon picks, these are from Leti, um, and the micro optics are from Axitrix, a Swiss company, um, and with collimation of that beam, then it's possible to have an expanded mode and you really relax the alignment tolerances on the, between the fiber and the pick. Um, the micro-optics are integrated at wafer scale, um, and that fine tolerance can be relatively easily done at a wafer scale. So you do your, your challenging alignment uh, at a wafer scale, and then that relaxes the alignment tolerance. Um, 
and you've probably seen this before, but we've actually had great interest on this, and we've a number of projects underway on biosensor, disposable type pick biosensor uh, applications, as well as some research work we're doing on pluggable transceivers as well. There's a number of groups working on this, but I do see great potential on a fiberless type pick package. So that, that opens up that. And just moving on then to cover the kind of suite of technologies that are, are needed for prototyping. Um, electrical integration, obviously, and previous uh, speaker talk about electrical interposers. So the choice really goes down to 2.5 or 3D integration. We've worked on both. There's been a lot of work done in the IC industry on uh, 2.5D. And we've worked, for example, on a number of European projects on 3D integration. Um, here you can see a silicon pick fabricated at Leti and ST Microelectronics developed the IC, um, uh, and uh, this is a, a driver IC, uh, flip chip integrated. Um, and in this case, it's using a copper pillar process. So um, the, the IC and the pick have copper pillar with a solder cap of silver tin copper. Um, it's reflowed onto the, onto the uh, so you can see the actual pick here, and the IC, uh, the IC uh, reflowed, and you can see some of the parameters here. So um, one of the big challenges we find with this, when you can actually just see the actual assembly here without the fibers. So we have the, uh, the, uh, the, the ceramic and the Rogers PCB, which breaks out the signal. You can see the actual IC and the, and the pick with the copper pillars. One of the big, big issues we find is the thermal management of these types of uh, hybrid integrated systems. I'll show, I'll show a, a small movie in a moment. Um, from a prototyping perspective, we often see people coming to us with ICs that are not, do not have copper pillars. So for example, there's a foundry service in Europe called Europractice, I think a similar one would be Moses here in the US, but often that might have, for example, um, an, a metallization on the IC that's not compatible with flip chip, for example, aluminium. And in that particular case, what we try and do to uh, ov overcome that is we do gold bumping on, on the, on the uh, aluminium, and then use a solder jetting process where we solder jet, we have a Pactec system, uh, quite, quite, a, quite a nice machine, it's a wafer scale process, and we jet these 50, 30 to 50 micron solar spheres of different eutectic alloys onto the, onto the pick. Um, so we first of all, this is actually upside down, you can imagine this has been flip chip down on top. We stood bump and then we can jet this solar sphere on top of that. And then that enables us to reflow, so we can reflow the IC directly onto the, um, onto the pick. And again, if the underbump metallization is not compatible, this is an approach we can take to do the 3D integration. Um, as I said, one of the issues with 3D integration is thermal management. So in this particular case, there was quite a large amount of power. It's about a watt of power going into the IC. Um, we have a thermal imaging microscope, sees down to around 10 micron, a FLIR system. And uh, it's quite a useful tool um, for different types of thermal tuning on picks. But here you can just see the actual uh, temperature rise on the actual uh, this is the IC sitting on the pick, and uh, the, the thermal kind of control of that IC, thermal control of the pick, um, if you've got different temperature sensitive components, can be quite important. You can see we put a huge pelt egg, which you normally don't want to do, but this was to make a, a demonstrator. But here you can see the actual temperature rise over time, and you can see the temperature difference between the IC and the actual pick. But it can be quite significant. It can change things like the the, the, uh, the, the peak bandwidth of your, your grating coupling, your, your AWGs, and different thermal tuning modules if you have it on a pick as well. So that, that can impede that. So there's a lot of negative things, I would say, about 3D integration that, you know, photonics is quite sensitive to, and you have to be very careful about how you manage that. Um, we're also working on uh, electrical, electrical interposer technology. Um, for example, uh, we're working uh, with a second phase with Karen's group on new devices coming out of AIM, and we also have a 2D, uh, based on glass, 2D uh, interposers as well. Um, where we're working towards is looking at a higher, uh, a smaller pitch, uh, thermal management, and design for higher frequencies. So just on the high frequency, we've, we've uh, done work on uh, aluminium nitrides, uh, ceramic multi-levels. So here you can see uh, we've been working on, uh, this is a HFSS simulation, up to around 20G, moving to glass, and a higher, uh, sorry, a finer pitch, we can get up to, plan to get up to around 40, 40 gigahertz on, on, on those multi-level interposers. And that's going to be very important for high density electrical packaging. Um, very briefly, uh, uh, this is work we've been doing with uh, Falcon Tech, uh, the German equipment packaging company. 
uh, integration of, uh, again, this is actually the medical device uh, I spoke about earlier, and actually where you modify your actual uh, package to accommodate the actual um, the, the machine. So uh, here you can see where we've redesigned the actual package and redesigned the pickup tools around the actual uh, the ceramic, so we can do active alignment, pulse the device and align it actively. You can see it from the nano glue when it's actually being aligned. The machine did not have that, so working in partnership with, your, with the packaging equipment companies is very important. I won't dwell on this, um, but again, companies like Fica Tech now are looking at serial pack packaging, so you can actually have a, a complete process flow. Um, uh, again, uh, design rules, you bring all this together. We've been working, for example, with Phoenix Software, especially in our pilot line, to bring all these into uh, rules together. So they're, they're available, and now they're being brought into, into the software. Um, just to show, for example, this is a recent device we packaged for Karen's group. Uh, the chip came from AIM. And again, working with the, the team before they actually designed the pick, we were able to, to optimize the layout. Here's the next device, and again, using the design rules, we were able to inform them at more efficient layout. And again, the interposer, we've uh, fabricated the interposer. You can see it's just ready to be diced. That was last week. And they again build that package. So again, we can get these devices out fairly quick, get them packaged, and people can evaluate them. Uh, the last thing I'll say is just on the pilot line. Um, you've probably heard about this before, but it's a European initiative. I think I spoke about it at the start, so I won't dwell on it too much. But really, it's looking at going beyond the prototyping. It's a great initiative. We have a large number of partners. It's hosted by Tyndall and Cork. Um, and it's essentially broken down between the development and the prototyping and our industry partners that are looking at the manufacturing. I won't say too much about that right now. The core of our, of our principles of the pilot line is custom solutions to standard packaging technologies. I think that's critical. Again, education and training. We're starting a hands-on training course in Tyndall in January. So a week's training, of practical training um, in our labs to actually develop these prototyping type solutions. And also, very important, that's one of the reasons I'm here today, the main, is to collaborate with the different international bodies to work on things like standardization. Uh, one of the nice examples of work that's just, we're running six months is what we call these reference picks. So essentially, we're developing these standard approaches and we're looking at these standard interfaces, electrical and optical packaging. So again, I won't dwell too much on that. Um, and the final thing I'll leave you with is just an example. So it's important for us to have, as I said, early wins, especially with SMEs. This is a nice example of how, in Europe, we've worked together. So PICS developed by JEPIX. Um, uh, David Williams is here from Eindhoven. Um, and uh, there's a company called Technobis. They've been developing these fiber interrogators, bad fiber interrogators for different high-end applications. We've worked with them developing the packaging solutions. Um, they looked at the scale-up. We trained them to actually do the packaging. They bought their own machines, and they do the, all their own in-house packaging now. They like to do that because it's a high-end product, and now they've got products on the market. So it's a nice example of getting an early win and stimulating the, you know, the, the, the product development in this area. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you very much. No, there's three ways where we're looking at manufacturing. One is to existing partners, and we hope they scale. This is from a European perspective. The second is that we're looking at, we might need to develop industrial scale manufacturing, you know, new, new companies to take up that business. The third way is this type of model here. Some companies, especially medical device companies, want to do the manufacturing themselves, because it's a highly regulated environment. They want to control that, so they want to take that in-house themselves. So we will support three, those three mechanisms. Yeah. I had a question regarding hermeticity. Sure. So uh, Ken mentioned that when they cut deep into the wafer, they need to put a moisture barrier down. Yeah. So there's a difference in philosophy from the photonic side. Typically, uh, you build a hermetic package, whereas in the silicon side, you build a hermetic chip. Yeah. So. What, can you say a few words about where you think things are going? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of it's going very low cost. I think uh, things like uh, low cost encapsulation, things like silicone materials. From a packaging perspective now, I'll speak about that earlier. Um, there's some very nice work done, for example, with Luxterra on wafer scale type hermetic sealing, uh, silicon uh, MEMS type approach. But I do see great 
uh, leadership from, for example, the LED industry, where they use very low cost encapsulation techniques for, for photonic devices, and they're very, very reliable. So um, I do see a lot of the industry moving towards those low cost encapsulation processes. Okay, great. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.